seven participants. I would like to start the call for Chief. Yes, thank you very much. So, Hare Krishna, um, welcome to everyone. Um, thank you for allowing me to try to purify myself by discussing um, some aspects of Krishna consciousness. So what we would do today, if we could bring up on the screen, Bhagavatam, second canto, chapter one, text number one, please. Oh, okay, Prabhuji, just give me just a few minutes. So two point, uh, chapter one, Prabhuji. Yes. And Canto two, chapter one, text number one, please. Okay. okay, and then what we'll do is we'll read the verse in the purple. We'll say Mangalachari in prayers, and then we will have some discussion. So Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya. Okay, so second canto of the Srimad Bhagavatam, chapter one, text number one. The Bhagavatam is full of deep instruction, practical instruction, but if we use it, it can help us transform everything about our lives. So I'll read the Sanskrit, then we'll go through the word for word. And then we'll go to the translation and go from there. Shri Shuku Vacha Varyan Esha Te Prashna Krito Loka Hitam Ripa Atma Samata Pumsam Shrotavya Dishuya Paraha. Transliteration Shri Shuku Uvacha Shri Shuka Dev Goswami said Varyan Glorious Eshaha This Te Yours, Prashnaha, question, Kritaha, made by you, Loka Hitam, beneficial for all men, Nripa, O King, Atmavit, transcendentalist, Samataha, approved, Pumsaham, of all men, Shrotavya Adisu, in all kinds of hearing, Yaha, what is, Paraha, the Supreme. Translation, and purple by his divine grace, Srila A.C. Bhaktivedanta Swami, Srila Prabhupada, Srila Prabhupada, Ki Jai. Sri Shukadev Goswami said, My dear King, your question is glorious because it is very beneficial to all kinds of people. The answer to this question is the prime subject matter for hearing, and it is approved by all transcendentalists. Now, before I give the purple, I read the purple. What I'm going to do is just share with you the question that Shukadev Goswami is referring to. So in the first canto Bhagavatam, there's a series of verses which start from, uh, let's see. Yeah, which start from first canto chapter 19, text number 31. So what happens is, Shukadev Goswami is present. He's present with Maharaj Pariksit, who's preparing to leave his body. And there are sages all around. And the sages have come from all over the universe. And Maharaj Pariksit is now addressing Shukadev Goswami. And he says as follows. The fortunate King Pariksit said, O Brahmana, by your mercy only you have sanctified us, making us like unto places of pilgrimage all by your presence here as my guest. By your mercy, we who are but unworthy royalty become eligible to serve the devotee. So in the series of verses in the, towards the end of the first canto, this is first canto chapter 19, Pariksit Maharaj asks Shukadev Goswami a question. Okay, so the question is the following. So this is, First Canto, chapter 19, text number 38. Please let me know what a man should hear, chant, remember, and worship, and also what he should not do. Okay? And in the verse before it, 
Prixit Marge says, you are the spiritual master of great saints and devotees. I am therefore begging you to show the way of perfection for all persons and especially for one who is about to die. Okay, so he's asking at the end of life, someone who's about to die, what should they hear? What should they chant? What should they remember? And what should they worship? Okay. And this is now Shukadev Goswami responding to the question. Okay. So Shukadev Goswami said, my dear king, your question is glorious because it is very beneficial to all kinds of people. The answer to this question is the prime subject matter for hearing. And it is approved by all transcendentalists. Okay. Purple by his divine grace, Shukadev Prabhupada. Even the very question is so nice that it is the best subject matter for hearing. Simply by such questioning and hearing, one can achieve the highest perfectional stage of life. This is very powerful. Because Lord Krishna is the original supreme person, any question about him is original and perfect. Lord Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said that the highest perfection of life is to achieve the transcendental loving service of Krishna. Because questions and answers about Krishna elevate one to that transcendental position, the questions of Maharaj Pariksit about Krishna philosophy are greatly glorified. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to absorb his mind completely in Krishna. And such absorption can be affected simply by hearing about the uncommon activities of Krishna. For instance, in the Bhagavad Gita, it is stated that simply by understanding the transcendental nature of Lord Krishna's appearance, disappearance, and activities, one can immediately return home back to Godhead and never come back to this miserable condition of material existence. It is very auspicious, therefore, to hear always about Krishna. So Maharaj Pariksit requested Shukadev Goswami to narrate the activities of Krishna so that he could engage his mind in Krishna. The activities of Krishna are non-different from Krishna himself. As long as one is engaged in hearing such transcendental activities of Krishna, he remains aloof from the conditional life of material existence. The topics of Lord Krishna are so auspicious that they purify the speaker, the hearer, and the inquirer. They are compared to the Ganges water, which flows from the toe of Lord Krishna. Wherever the Ganges waters go, they purify the land and the person who bathes in them. Similarly, Krishna Kata, or the topics of Krishna, are so pure that, when, that wherever they are spoken, the place, the hearer, the inquirer, the speaker, and all concerned become purified. It's a beautiful, a beautiful, extraordinary and powerful verse in purple. So we'll say Mangalachari, and then we are going to, um, to discuss from that point onwards. Okay, so... Om Gyana Timurandasya, Gyananjana Shalakaya, Chakshu Um Militamina, Tasmai Shri Guru Vena Maha, Sri Chaitanya Manovish Dham Stapitam Yena Bhutale, Swayam Rupa Gata Mayam Dadati Swa Padantikam, Vande Ham Shri Guru, Sri Yuta Padakamalam Shri Guru and Vaishnavamscha, Sri Rupam Sagrajatam Zahagana, Raganatam Vitam Tom Zajivam, Sadvaitam Savadutam, Virginus Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Sri Radha Krishna Padansa Hagana Lalita, Sri Vishakam Vitamscha, He Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate, Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostate, Tabta Kanchana Gorangi Rade Vrindavaneshwari, Risha Banu Sutta Devi Pranamami Hari Priye, Vanchika Patrubhyas Cha, Kripa Sindhu Vyeva Chapatit Nam Bhava Nibyo Vaishnavebyo Namo Namaha. Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Shri Advaita Gadadara Shri Vasudhi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 
Krishna Krishna Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare Hare so to our dear audience life is all about questions and answers this is the first thing to bear in mind life is always about questions and answers life is all, always about communication but there are different types of communication we have gramya kata and we have krishna kata in this verse and purport and this pastime we're hearing about the power and the potency of kata or hearing about krishna our aspirations are based upon what we hear our aspirations are based upon what we hear so hearing hearing is actually the compass of the heart when you hear repeatedly about a particular topic especially when you hear about the topic from from people who have an enthusiasm for that topic and when you hear from people who are enthusiastic about that topic with a receptive heart then literally the entire direction of our life moves the trouble in the material world is we've heard so much about the mundane right because we've heard so much about the mundane we've become contaminated by a desire for that which is mundane but we can completely reverse that process and this is what krishna consciousness does krishna consciousness is the means by which we reverse the material the material disease and reversing it means bringing it back to its original form which is the spiritual desire so there's two things material disease and spiritual desire and the way this is done is extremely and perfectly described in this meeting between Pariksit Maharaj and Shukadev Goswami so Pariksit Maharaj is asking what should someone hear about what should they chant what should they remember and what should they worship now this is very very powerful there are all types of subtle but extremely powerful um teachings in the bhagavatam i mean so many things and if we understand this ladies and gentlemen if we understand what is being offered to us it will literally change the entire course of our life hmm? so what is what is prixit maharaj asking about he asked what should one do who's about to die in our previous class that we had together we were talking about time and we were talking about how valuable time was we were talking about how time was a manifestation of krishna and we were talking about how our time is really our guru's time it belongs to guru and we were also talking about how krishna consciousness allows us to take mundane time and transform it into eternity by using the material time in krishna's service so pariksit maharaj he, this this discussion links because he's asking what should one do who's about to die that means what should one do who's about to run out of time hmm? shri prabhupad was questioned i think it was a reporter they said to prabhupad why are you giving sanyas to these young men i've heard that in indian culture sanyas is meant to be given to someone who's old 
And Prabhupada said, what do you mean by old? What do you understand by old? And then before the person could answer, Prabhupada said, old means, would you agree that old means someone who is about to die? Right? And the reporter said, yes, Prabhupada. Yeah, old, yeah, someone who's about to die, someone who's old. And Prabhupada said, so how do you know that you are not about to die? It's a very powerful statement. How do you know that you are not about to die? Hmm? Pariksit Maharaj was cursed to die in seven days. And that curse is the curse of every single member of the human race. We all will die in seven days. Eva will die on a Monday, a Tuesday, a Wednesday, a Thursday, a Friday, a Saturday or Sunday. One of these seven days, we're going to die. So we're in the same situation. And Pariksit Maharaj in the first canto, he is receiving Shukadev Goswami and he's making these inquiries. He's making these inquiries. And these inquiries, in this verse, Shukadev Goswami is saying that these inquiries are glorious because they benefit everyone. And it's the prime subject matter for hearing. Isn't that interesting? So the king who's about to die is asked a question. And this great exalted devotee has said, your question is a good question. It's a glorious question. All of us, we can, change the, we can change the entire course of our life by asking the right questions. And I repeat that. You and I, we can change everything about our life by asking the right questions to the right personalities. Okay. And this is what's been done here. We, again, referring back to what Pariksit Maharaj asked, he said, what should one hear, chant, remember, and worship at the time of death, right? Just before he's going to pass away. And that's very interesting because we said that what you hear is it changes the direction of your life. These four things are connected. First, we hear about something, so we receive. Then once we've heard about it, then we speak about it, so we chant. When we hear and chant about something, we become absorbed, we remember. And when we hear about something, we chant about something, and we remember about something, it causes us to act. So we worship. So it all starts with hearing. People think, I don't know how to change my habits. I don't know how to change my life. Wrong. Wrong. There is a science of how to change our habits, change our life. Even there's a science of how we change our thinking. Because what is thought? Thought is the internal hearing. Our thoughts are simply what we hear on the inside. And our chanting is what we speak on the outside. Oh. In psychology, they talk about self-talk or the internal dialogue. And they say that basically everything about us I repeat, every single thing about us is based upon what we hear inside. If you have a, someone who's always told, you can't achieve, you can't do this, you can't do that, you can never be successful, then when they're young, they hear that from their parents, they hear that from their elders, and it goes straight into their mind. 
And then when they're older, unless they change that pattern, they speak like that. I can't do, I can't achieve, I can't do anything, I can't be successful. So they've heard it, then they start to chant it. And because they've heard and chanted, it's, they start to remember this. They start to keep thinking of this. And then what happens to their activity? Their activities, they don't try. So our entire life is directed by hearing. The hearing outside comes inside. The hearing inside becomes what we remember. The remembrance becomes what we do. So ladies and gentlemen, what I want to share with you is that the Srimad Bhagavatam allows you to hear from the Supreme Parent. We have, um, there's, there's this concept of the wise inner parent. And if we really understand that, if the, the true understanding of the wise inner parent would actually be the understanding of the Lord within the heart. Krishna wants us to be happy. If someone always thinks I'm a failure, I'm no good, I can't do anything, would that person be happy? Yes or no? Any answers? If a person always thinks I cannot do something, I cannot be happy, I cannot be successful, I can't achieve, I will always fail, will that person be happy? Yes or no? Absolutely, they will never be happy. No. They'll never be happy if they think like that. Would someone be happy if they always think I am going to die? What do you think? Yes or no? Any answers? If someone always thinks I'm going to die, I'm going to be diseased, I'm going to grow old, absolutely, they won't be happy. Those ideas, they relate to the body. What we have in our hands, ladies and gentlemen, in the, in the form of the Srimad Bhagavatam, is actually a tool it's a process. It's a, it's a process of healing that will heal us of all the wrong material speech in the mind. All the material ideas in the mind that have held us back from our true, deep, and lasting happiness by reading Srimad Bhagavatam and by hearing these transcendental messages you actually change the way that you think huh? right? you change the way that you think by changing the way that we think we change the way that we feel by changing the way that we feel we change the way that we act and react. It all begins fundamentally with the quality of our hearing, ladies and gentlemen. Hearing is absolutely everything. Hearing is absolutely powerful. Hearing is absolutely fundamental. So, Shukadev Goswami has glorified Pariksit Maharaj because he's asked the right question. And when you ask the right question, you will hear the right answer. Okay, I repeat that. When we ask the right question, we will hear the correct answer. Prabhupada in this purple begins, even the very question is so nice that it is the best subject matter for hearing. 
simply by such questioning and hearing, one can achieve the highest perfectional stage of life. Now, look at that. Look at what Prabhupada has said here. He's giving us clues. And not only is he giving us clues, he's giving us something that we can do practically. There are many people in the world who think being spiritual is, is airy-fairy, it's, it's fluffy, it's vague, it's, it's unclear. But Prabhupada isn't saying that. Prabhupada is saying it's about asking the right question and hearing the answers from the proper source with the proper mentality of humility. I was, I was speaking to one devotee and we were having a conversation and I shared with him something that I'd heard from His Holiness Chandra Muli Maharaj. So Chandra Muli Maharaj had actually shared in a class that Prabhupada once told devotees that the reason, whatever reason, whatever obstacle caused them not to go back to Godhead in their last life, whatever test they didn't pass, but caused them not to go back to Godhead in their previous life, that that same test will come again in this life. So I was discussing with a friend and I said to him, so therefore, if we're intelligent, what we will do is we will try to find out what are the lessons that I need to learn in this life in order to achieve perfection, in order to become fully Krishna conscious, in order to go back home, back to Godhead. If we're intelligent, see, it's a question. What do I need to learn in order to become successful in Krishna conscious in this life? Now, just take a moment to think carefully about this. The number of questions that can be conceived are literally unlimited. You can ask any number of questions. You can come up with, if I asked you to write down questions, any question that you can think of, you could write questions forever. You could write one question, you know, what's the temperature on the moon? Um, how big is the tree next to my house? How small is a seed? What can, what seeds can, um, what seeds can be turned into food? You can ask unlimited questions. But when we ask the right questions, questions about Krishna, questions as Prabhupada says about Krishna philosophy, questions about how we can apply Krishna philosophy, questions about how we can be free of challenges to our spiritual progress. Every time we ask those questions, sincerely, with the proper mood, with humility, we can actually come out of prison. And we can actually forever come out of a state of suffering and into an eternal state of ecstasy. Think about that. Just by asking the right questions. There's a very, it's, it's sad, it's, it's moving, it's touching, a very touching story set in Nazi Germany and some Jews were in a concentration camp and they were preparing to be killed right? and naturally fear would be there, anger would be there, resentment would be there, so many negative emotions naturally actually but there was one person amongst many but one person who survived he managed to get free of the concentration camp and managed to escape without being killed. 
and he left behind his diaries, his writings. And he shared something which to this day has literally changed the course of many people's lives when they read it. He shared how he managed to escape the concentration camp. He said that I saw everyone in the concentration camp and they were scared, they were fearful, they, they, were, they were saying goodbye to their loved ones, you know, soon we'll be pulling, we'll be, we'll be killed. And he noticed as they were speaking that there was a certain way of viewing the situation. They were all thinking in a similar way. And he, de he decided, I need, if I'm going to escape, I need to think in a different way. This is the power of thinking. He said, I, I, I realized that if I was going to have any chance of surviving, I will need to think in a different way. So as he saw all of his peers, all thinking, when are we going to die? When are we going to be taken away? When are we going to be killed? He said, I decided to think in a different way. And it's very interesting because what he thought was a question, right? So our thoughts are, are also questions. Everyone else was thinking, when am I going to die? And his question in his mind was, how am I going to escape? Now, bear in mind here, he didn't say the question, will I escape? You see? Because if you say, will I escape, you're assuming what? If I ask the question, will I escape? What am I assuming by the question? Anyone, I'd like one person to answer. If I ask, will I escape? What am I assuming by my question? Absolutely, Sukaba. Yes, I'm not sure that I can. Right, so there's still the possibility it won't. I won't be able to escape. He asked himself the question not once, again, and again, and again, and again. How will I escape? And because he kept asking himself this question, it became his meditation. Okay, so we said hearing, chanting, remembering, worshipping. It became his meditation. He kept asking, how am I going to escape? He didn't ask it once. He asked it again and again and again. Now, let me pause there. If someone asks something again and again and again and again, it means that they are what? It begins with D. It means that they are what? Desperate, Prabhuji. Could be desperate. Anything else? Begin with, yes. Determined. Yes. Okay. So it also showed that there's a strong conviction. He asked the question, how am I going to escape? And because he kept asking that question, the super soul gave him insight, gave him realization. What he then did one evening, because there were some dead bodies from people who had been killed in the concentration camp. One evening when no one was watching, where people were asleep, the guards were away, he stripped off, he took all of his clothes off because the dead bodies all had no clothes, right? People were gassed. He took all of his clothes off and he laid on top of the dead bodies, pretending to be dead. So when all those dead bodies were moved out of the concentration camp, his body was moved along with all the other dead bodies. Because it was assumed that he's on that pile of dead bodies, that means he must be also dead. 
So his dead body was moved out with all the other dead bodies. And in that way, he was able to flee and to escape and to gain his freedom. Ladies and gentlemen, what I want to really, what I want to draw your attention to, ladies and gentlemen, is the power of the questions that you ask. I want to draw your attention to the power of the questions that you ask yourself and the power of the questions that you ask others. The power of the questions that you ask determines where you go in life. This is how powerful this is. And the Srimad Bhagavatam is what? It's full of questions and answers. Pariksit Maharaj asking Shukadev Goswami questions. Right? The sages of Nama Sharanya asking questions to Sutta Goswami. Right? We have um, Sh- and we have Vyasadev asking questions to Narada Muni. Questions and answers. We go to the Bhagavad Gita. What is the Bhagavad Gita? Questions and answers. Arjuna asking questions to Krishna and Krishna answering. The direction of our life, our success and our failure is based upon the questions that we ask. So what is the what is the Srimad Bhagavatam trying to do? It is helping us to understand the questions that will lead to our true happiness and our true spiritual success. Prabhupada says, a fool remains hidden until they do what? Prabhupada says a fool remains hidden until they do what? Until they speak. Absolutely. Thank you. Because the speech, the words, they also, they help us to understand what's going on inside. So what we're trying to do in this Krishna consciousness is to ask the right questions and i'm going to give you a pause i want you to think of one good question that you can ask that will help your spiritual life and i'm going to give you one minute and i'll come back So this is really important. This is really important because the questions that we ask ourselves in life, they actually show whether we've accepted defeat or whether we have hope and faith, you see? So it's so interesting. If you look in the world, the majority of people have accepted defeat. What do I mean by that? The majority of people in the world have accepted that we're just gonna die and there's nothing we can do about it. We're gonna have disease and there's nothing we can do about it. Old age, there's nothing we can do about it. 
So they are they have surrendered to being victims of the material energy. And then within the global population, there's a small group, devotees, who are asking different questions. It is so powerful. This, this pastime of Pariksit Maharaj and Shukadev Goswami, why is it so powerful? Why is it so powerful? Because it deals with the fundamentals of human existence. And, and not only is it powerful in that exchange, but it's powerful that Prabhupada, he also set the same example. 1977, Prabhupada was preparing to leave the world. Most people, when they leave the world, they're just down, negative. Prabhupada, when he's leaving the world, what is Prabhupada doing? He's, trans he's translating what? Which literature was Prabhupada translating up until the time that he left the world? Shumad Bhagavad. Absolutely. How can you do that? How can you be at an advanced age? Your body is very ill, but you're there and you're continuing to translate the Srimad Bhagavatam. Who would have the strength, the, the consciousness to do that unless they were free of the bodily conception? So we don't understand what we've been given. We think, oh, it's, yeah, it's nice, Krishna consciousness is nice. No, it's extraordinary. Krishna consciousness is not nice, it's extraordinary. Prabhupada was told by some doctors, they said to Prabhupada, Prabhupada, your body has so many things wrong with it that you should be screaming in pain. But he wasn't. Because he's above the bodily platform. Hmm? Prabhupada, when he came to the West, he wrote these prayers, the Jaladuta prayers. He says in the prayers to Krishna, he says, how would they understand my message? How would they understand your message? He said, these people in the West, in the Western world, they're covered by the modes of ignorance and passion. How would they understand this message? He says, interesting, he says, you're the ones who put them in the prison. You must be able to free them. Please make my power of speech suitable for them to understand your message. Isn't that incredible? Isn't that incredible? He asked the right things. He didn't say they're not going to be able to understand. I'm wasting my time. He didn't say that. He said, how will they understand? And then he said, you have the power to make them understand. So you please make my speech suitable so that they will be able to understand your message. Isn't that incredible? Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about the questions that we ask. Ladies and gentlemen, it's all about what we hear internally, which then becomes what we speak externally, which then becomes what we remember, and then becomes what we do. So life is a sound vibration. The, the course of our life, the journey of our lives is all built on the foundation of sound. It's all based upon what we hear. So what, what does this mean for us? There are some things that we hear which will accelerate our will accelerate our spiritual success. Like now, we hear the Bhagavatam, we hear about Krishna, we ask questions about the philosophy, that will accelerate us. But there are also things which will cause us to be more covered. Every time we hear and absorb ourselves in this Gramya Kata, mundane sound, we are literally telling Krishna, I don't want to come back to you. I want to stay 
in the material world longer. When we hear material sound, we actually allow ourselves to be covered more and more and more and more and more. We slow down our spiritual progress rather than speeding up our spiritual progress. So we want to encourage all of us to hear the right thing, ask the right questions in the right way. That's what we're looking to do. You can guarantee your success or your failure by what you hear again and again. Isn't that amazing? What is, is, is so interesting, and even in other traditions, what did they say? In the beginning, there was the word, right? In the Christian tradition, in, in the beginning, there was the word. So they recognized sound. And we know in our tradition, Golokera, Premadana, Harinam, Sankirtan. This transcendental sound of the holy name is coming from the spiritual platform. Sound is supreme. So how do I practically ensure that I will be able to make real and strong spiritual progress? Three things that we want you to consider Three things we want to leave you with to consider very carefully. One, how do I reduce material sound? The most damaging of all material sound is the criticism of devotees. Okay. Of all the material sounds, which is most damaging, criticism of devotees is the most damaging material sound. So we want to see how can I reduce material sound, point number one. Point number two, how can I increase spiritual sound? Spiritual sound means the chanting of the Hare Krishna Maha Mantra. The reading and hearing of the Srimad Bhagavatam, especially in the association of devotees. So number one, how can I reduce material sound? Number two, how can I increase spiritual sound? And number three, how can I do this consistently? So every day, Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya, right? Prabhupada translates it, regular attendance on the classes of the Bhagavatam. And what does that do? It destroys everything which is negative within the heart, everything unfavorable. Isn't that incredible? This is a, this is a practical formula. Anyone who, re, who hears the message of the Bhagavatam regularly, not just once, not every now and then, but everyone who hears it regularly will have anything in the heart that is not good completely removed by Krishna. So reduce material sound, increase spiritual sound, and do it consistently. This is the formula for spiritual transformation. And this is what is being spoken of in this verse. And this is what is being spoken of in the, in the purple. Interesting statement in the purple. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to absorb his mind completely in Krishna. And this is so amazing. Look, listen to what Prabhupada says. Maharaj Pariksit wanted to absorb his mind completely in Krishna. And such absorption can be affected simply by hearing about the uncommon activities of Krishna. This is not my words. This is what Prabhupada says in the purple. It's a how-to. 
The Srimad Bhagavatam is a how-to spiritual guide. It shows you how to achieve absorption in Krishna. This absorption can be achieved, can be affected simply by hearing about the uncommon activities of Krishna. So if we follow the formula, the practical formula that has been given in the pages of the Srimad Bhagavatam, knowing that what we hear inside determines what we speak outside, determines what we remember, and determines what we do, then we can be guaranteed of success. This verse in the Bhagavad Gita comes to mind. Krishna tells Arjun, whatever one thinks about at the time of death, that state he will attain without fail, he says. And we're being given the clue from the Bhagavatam that the remembrance, what we, what we think about in our life, and especially what we think about at the time of death, is going to be determined by what we hear and what we speak regularly. Very, very powerful. Will I hear about regularly? is going to determine what I speak about regularly. What I speak about regularly is going to determine what I think about regularly. And what I think about regularly is going to determine what I'm gonna think about at the time of death. And therefore it will determine whether I go back to Godhead or take birth again in the material world. Okay, so let's stop there and we'll open up for questions. Any questions? Hey Krishna. Hey Krishna, thank you Prabhuji for the very wonderful class uh, on topic like power of hearing. How like uh, by um, the power of hearing we can completely absorb in Krishna and uh, we can uh, mm, achieve the highest uh, goal in our life. How we can transcend our course of life entirely. Thank you so much, Ramji. Very nice, very powerful class. Uh, dear devotees, um, uh, please um, have any questions, um, comments, or realizations. Please go ahead and uh, um, uh, you can unmute yourself or you can type the chat box. Um, you can uh, raise your hand. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Please accept my humble obeisances. Once you call with the Rupia Strip, a person to be a Avaja, with the Tanam Pavan and Pio, wish the Pimun. It was a wonderful class, Prabhuji. A very important topic covered, like uh, right question to be asked to right, uh, right person. So, um, one thing I wanted to ask, you mentioned uh, how to reduce the uh, three things you mentioned. How do, how do I reduce the material sounds? Second is uh, how do I increase the spiritual sound? And third is how can I do this consistently? I, I want you to elaborate a little more on how do I do it consistently because I think that is where we uh, the hard part is I think um, sure thank you for that question to make, to make it consistent thank you for that question so so today in the UK at least is the beginning of Kartik so the month of Damodar so this is a time in which any devotional service gives 1,000 times the benefit. And of course, if people are in Vrindavan, then they get a 1,000 times the benefit on top of the 1,000. Mm -hmm. So Prabhupada said it's like a sale. Now, to be honest, yes, Kartik is like a sale. But let's be honest, 
because we are under the mercy of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and Srila Prabhupada, we're getting a discount all year round. Okay? Yes, Kartik is a cell, but in the movement of Krishna consciousness, everyone has a discount every day of the year. That's the first point. Now to your question, how do I do this more consistently? To be very, first of all, thank you. This, see, this is what I mean. That's a good question. You see? And, and, and I want to encourage you, whenever you come to class, whenever you come to class physically or online or whenever you communicate with devotees, I want to encourage you in the power of asking questions because the questions can change your life. Change, they will, not can. I take it back. Asking the right questions will change our life. You understand? So, to try to offer something, and it's very interesting in the purple, it changes the speaker, it changes the person who's hearing, it changes the person who inquires. Everyone is transformed. So it's good for all of us, right? So to answer your question, how to do it consistently, you have to see what works for you, okay? I'll give you an example. I know for myself, if I'm studying with someone, it's much easier to be consistent. Right? And it's much more powerful for me. Why? Because not only am I reading, not only am I writing things down, but there's a dialogue. So in the purple, what stood out for you? Oh, that's interesting, Prabhu. What stood out for me was this, but why did that stand out? That stood out because I read this before and then I heard this class and I saw these things all came together, right? So this consistency, there's many things you can do. Some devotees, they can easily have a time in their diary. They can put something in their schedule. Every morning between this time and this time, I'm going to read. Right? For someone else, they can do that, but they may think every day in the evening between this time and this time, I'm going to read with a friend. Right? Because that way it will make me more consistent. For someone else, they may think, how can I be more consistent? They may think, you know, I'm only going to read, I'm, sorry, I'm only going to have breakfast after I've done some reading. Okay? For someone else, they may think I'll be consistent by making it such, I'm going to make it as easy as possible to do the reading. So I'm going to consistently read, or I'm going to say, I'm going to read minimum five minutes a day. Because if I just say five minutes, I'll be consistent. Or so, or so one page a day. And you know what's funny? Because they made it so easy for themselves, they end up doing more and more and more every day. So it's personal. So the question is, what do I need to do to make my reading and hearing consistent? You see? And it could be different answers to different people. Some people, they may think, you know what? Consistent means I will, I will share what I've read with someone else. So I'm accountable. So I have a mentor. And every day, I told my mentor, every day I'm going to read and I'm going to send you a message after I finish reading just to say, Prabhu or Mataji, I've done the reading for today. And so if you don't get the message, then you can come to me and say, um, I didn't see any message from you yesterday. Did you read? And say, so, oh, oh, no, I didn't do any reading. Oh, no. Oh, no. And then I don't want to keep telling my mentor that I'm not reading. So out of pressure, I will do it. So different things work for different people. There's many things you can try. But Krishna consciousness is personal. It's personal. So what may work for one person, it may not be as effective for someone else. It may still work. But it may not be as effective as something else for another person. So also, we can try something and see if it works. Okay, let me try for a week to use this approach. I will only take breakfast after I've done some reading. And then see if that works. And if it doesn't, okay, then we may try something slightly different. You can also, we can also pray to Prabhupada. We can pray to Krishna. Prabhupada, Krishna, what's the technique? What, what do I need to do to read consistently? 
Please help me to understand. And you keep asking the question in your mind, keep thinking, what can I do to read consistently? And then you ask your friends, what, what do you do that allows you to read consistently? What do you think that I can do that will help me to read consistently? And then they may come back to us and say, you know what, for you, Mataji, I, I've known you for many years. I think that for you, you should do this, which will help you to read consistently. It's so, it's so, it's so beautiful, Krishna consciousness, because we're not alone. We're not alone. Therefore, we don't have to rely on our own strength. We should use our intelligence because it's Krishna's intelligence. We should offer it to him by using it. But we can also ask other devotees. We can also pray. And we can be guaranteed that because we're trying our best, Krishna is going to help us. So we have to do something. We have to try. Okay, I think this will help. So I'm going to start here. But while I'm doing this, I'm also looking to see, is it working? And if it's not working, I'll try something else. But I will never give up in my endeavor to become effective in these activities that will please Krishna and that will purify me. Does that answer your question? I can't hear you. Namrat, you're muted. Yes, yes. Okay. So in summary, I'll say start with one thing that you think will help you to be consistent. Maybe it's, I only, I'm gonna, get, I'm, gonna, I'm gonna tell my mentor I'm gonna read every day and I have to send them a message to say I've read. So I'm accountable. It could be the time of day. I know that in the morning is good for me. I can read in the morning before I start work or before I take breakfast. So think what's the thing that's gonna work for me and then try it and observe how it works or doesn't work. And if it doesn't work, try something else. And also feel free to reach out to your friends, those who know you to get their ideas on how you can be consistent in the reading. For me, I know that what helps me is to read with another person. And by regularly reading with another person, it becomes very much a dialogue. So we'll read and then discuss. I'll make notes, et cetera. And that way it works very well for me. So see what works for you. It's okay. Yes, Prabhuji. Uh, being specific, I would like to uh, ask you the consistency about chanting. Mm -hmm. Chanting, uh, sometimes, you know, at least for females, it, it becomes really uh, difficult to maintain the consistency. Mm -hmm. And uh, I'm looking for uh, the answer for that. So, yeah, uh, there are most of the things you have covered but anything specific that you would add for chanting okay give me one second yeah so the thing is <laughs> we find time for things which are important so our difficulty in chanting is because we're not convinced about its importance and therefore we don't find the time for it. So what we need to do is to, we still should chant anyway. <laughs> That's the first thing. Even if we don't understand how important it is, we should still do it. But we need to deeper and deeper understand the importance of the chanting if we want to really make it something that we do and that we do consistently, okay? So how do, I, how do I become convinced of the importance of the chanting? It will come from hearing about the chanting. So listen to classes. I'm just plugging the, the computer in. So listen to classes about chanting read about chanting, inquire from those who are really fixed in their chanting, right? So that's one side. And then on the other side, make time, set time in your schedule for chanting. Don't make it something that you just do if you've managed to find some time, but rather look in your diary every day and say, I'm going to chant between this time and this time. And then when you, when, you, when you have 
when you come to that appointment. So you can consider it your Nam appointment, your Harry Nam appointment. Book time in your schedule for a, for, for a meeting with Harry Nam. Okay, every day put time in your schedule for a meeting with Harry Nam and make sure the time is in your schedule before anything else happens. So put it in your schedule. And if something else comes up, then make sure that you reschedule, but never avoid your appointment with Harry Nam. Okay. And when you come to that appointment, go away and do your chanting. Don't do it where there's other distractions because they will steal your time. Just like if you have an appointment with the queen, you would make sure that you're available and that there's nothing else going on so you can spend time with the queen. In the same way, Harry Nam, where's my time in the schedule? Have some time in the schedule, an appointment with the holy name. And if you understand the importance of it and you make time for it, then it will become consistent, yeah? If we don't understand its importance, then when something else comes up, I'll say, yeah, 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 okay, I'll do the chanting another time. It's okay, it's, you know, because something more important. Or if we don't put time in the schedule, Maya will make sure that something else comes up. You can't chant now because there's, there's this emergency you have to deal with. Or you, you can't chant now because, you know, your, your favorite television program is on. Or you can't chant now because you're tired. Maya will make sure that you never find the time because you haven't, you haven't set important time for it. Many devotees are in that space. They think, oh, I'll do it later on. Yeah, I'll, yeah, later on. Yeah, of course, later, later on. And then later becomes later, becomes later, becomes later, becomes now you're tired and you just want to go to sleep. So we have to understand the importance of the chanting. And by reading and studying Prabhupada's books, We'll understand the importance of chanting. That's point number one. And point number two is I have to make set time for my chanting, ideally at the beginning of the day before everything else. Yeah. Does that answer your question? Yes, perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you. I saw Sukhavaha. Um, you have a question, Mataji. Your hand was up. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, thank you so much. Please accept my humble obeisances. All glories to Srila Prabhupada and all glories to our Guru Maharajas. Uh, thank you so much for the class, Prabhuji. It was amazing. Um, sometimes, you know, uh, when we try and focus so much on our goal, we become very harsh on ourselves, basically. So how, how can you manage to discipline ourselves, but don't be too harsh on ourselves as well at the same time? It's, now, this is a very interesting question. Thank you for your question. This is Krishna's arrangement. I was reading something just oh, okay. yesterday which related to this. It was very, very interesting. And I was hearing something earlier today which also related to this. And the speaker was speaking about compassionate self-discipline. Yeah? If, see, the mind... Chanchala Himana Krishna. Krishna says the mind is very difficult to control. It's flickering. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you push the mind too harsh, too much, too extreme, then it backlashes. It rebels mm -hmm. completely in the opposite direction. Yeah. And at the same time, if we don't guide the mind at all, then we never become, um, we never gain self-mastery. We never become Goswami master of the senses will always be godasa servant of the senses mm -hmm. so it's about compassionate self-discipline so there's a literature called manashiksha by raghunath das goswami mm -hmm. and he's basically helping us to understand the importance of directing the mind guiding the mind so what we don't do is we're not too harsh on the mind because we don't want the mind to rebel. So we can think about this in terms of the modes. Mode of ignorance is we just let the mind do whatever it wants and therefore that we, we're, just completely, we're just completely dragged as a slave. 
mode of passion is we force the mind. No, you're going to do what I tell you. Push, 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 push. Then the mind burns out. Mode of passion. Mode of goodness. Mode of goodness is, again, the wise inner parent. Right? And so think about the mind as like a child. The child doesn't want to go to school. Right? Do we say, oh, okay, then you don't have to go to school. No. If we do that, the child will never learn. Mm. Or do we threaten the child? You have to do what I tell you. You're going to go to school now. Otherwise, I'll beat you up. That child will be fearful. It will go to school, but it will hate school. And the mm. moment it can get away from school, it will run away from school mm. because it was pushed too hard. What does a loving and wise parent do for the child? My dear son, I understand. I understand. I understand that you may feel some resistance, but you know, if we go to school, this will be tremendously beneficial. Mm -hmm. If you go to school, you can learn, you can play, you can grow so many things. It will help your future. So we lovingly, but firmly, I repeat, we lovingly, mm -hmm. but firmly let the mind or let the child know you have to go to school, but this is why it would be good for you to go to school. Mm -hmm. And we encourage the, the child to go to school. And we also appreciate the child going to school. I'm so glad you went to school. So what does that mean for us? We encourage the mind to do the, the correct spiritual activities. And we also reward the mind for doing it. So we pray at the end of the chanting. Dear Lord, dear Gurudev, thank you for the chanting. It was so wonderful. This is what I gained from the chanting. Loving, compassionate encouragement to do the right thing mm -hmm. right? so i repeat consistent loving kind compassionate encouraging the mind to do the right thing mm -hmm. that's how we should deal with ourselves in krishna consciousness so we do it so that's important not that we don't do it always do it Always do the chanting, always do the reading, but in a in an encouraging way, in an encouraging way. And that way, the mind will not rebel. And the mind, as it becomes purified, cheto darpana marginum. As the mind becomes purified, the mind will want to do it anyway. Mm. True. Yeah. Okay. Down to question. Yes, Ravi, thank you so much for explaining it very nicely. Okay, thank you. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna. Uh, Any Hare other questions? Uh, Hare Krishna, Prabhuji, if it's okay, can I ask a question? Yes, please. Uh, so, Prabhuji, thank you. Uh, my question is a little similar to Mataji, but uh, it's a different like uh, experience I have. Like, uh, as you said, Prabhuji, like thoughts, our thoughts, like, you know, um, uh, they form sometimes they also form a question right yes. so in that process like uh, i experience like okay i'm hearing i'm doing all the devotional process but i also experience like it's a constant battle between material and spiritual energy sometimes like um, when i hear and, with, and i just go and like you know interact with the material world i feel like you know it's like a battle for me and in that process i feel i'm getting tired so instead of uh, feeling bliss so I don't know if I'm going anywhere wrong. Could you please explain, help me? Krishna explains in the Bhagavad Gita that one has to have balance. He, he explains that one cannot be a yogi who's not, who does not have a balance between work and recreation, et cetera, et cetera. What that means mm -hmm. is that we should do Krishna consciousness mm -hmm. in a way that is that causes us to be enthusiastic mm -hmm. and inspired as much as possible okay so first of all we should do it that's the first thing and second we do it in a way that's as infusing inspiring as we can okay, okay. so for example this story there's a story that it's a story that bhakti tirtamaj told such an animal just a question mm -hmm. so before he left the world 
Satchananda Maharaj and him had the communication. And he told Satchananda Maharaj, he said, in every one of us, mm -hmm. there is a good dog and a bad dog fighting for supremacy. Mm -hmm. And the question he asked is, which will win the war? And the answer was, whichever dog you feed the most. So the good dog is like our higher self, mm -hmm. our Krishna conscious self. The bad dog is like our material self. Mm -hmm. So the solution is to feed ourselves Krishna consciousness in a way that is inspiring and infusing. So mm -hmm. there's so many classes you can hear. Listen to those Krishna conscious classes that inspire you. Okay. Mm -hmm. There's so many services you, you can do. Engage in Krishna conscious services that inspire you. Okay. Right? There's so many devotees associate with the devotees who you find inspiring. Mm. Yeah? There's so many ways to study Prabhupada's books. Study in the way that inspires you. Huh? Mm. There's so many festivals, projects, books of Prabhupada, Krishna mm. conscious literature. Read the, in the, that which inspires you. Do your spiritual life in the way that inspires you as much as possible. Sometimes there are certain things that we have to do in Krishna consciousness that we don't find very inspiring. Mm. But if we're doing the things that inspire us in Krishna consciousness, that gives us the strength to also do the other things mm -hmm. which we should do, which may not be so inspiring at this time. Okay. Unless we practice, and as we practice doing things in Krishna consciousness, as much as possible that inspire us, it gives us the strength to do the other things as well that we also should do. Okay. Yeah. So Prabhuji, we have to choose also, like uh, there are so many uh, speakers, we have so many lectures, so many things we have to do, like devotion service. So we have to choose that inspires, that motivates us. That yeah, whenever we have a choice. yeah, whenever we have the option, mm -hmm. yeah. then, we should, then we should find those things which really help me to strengthen and to be inspired. Oh, okay. And then we can also, we can also pray to Guru, mm. pray to Prabhupada and pray to Krishna, please give me the strength mm -hmm. to progress. Please give me the strength and the taste to progress in spiritual life. Mm. Yes, Prabhupada. And, and also, if we do it consistently, then they will help. Yeah. Yes, Prabhuji. And also we need to have the discrimination also, Prabhuji. Yes. Think like uh, when we are doing a, um, a devotional service, like any like a hearing or any process, mm -hmm. uh, we should have the discrimination, like, okay, which one I have to choose like that, Prabhuji? Yeah, whenever you have, to, we have free will. Even, okay. Prabhupada said he wanted independent, thoughtful-minded people in Krishna consciousness. So we have free will. So we always have the power of choice. So we should choose those mm -hmm. options which will help us most to progress in Krishna consciousness. That's given in scripture. Scripture mm -hmm. says you accept what's favorable, we reject what's unfavorable. Mm -hmm. okay. yes. yeah. And now just one question, Prabhji, like uh, you gave the um, like a formula, like a reduced material sound, increased spiritual sound, like in reduced material sounds, criticism of devotees. Yes, um, that's so, a worse material sound. Yeah, so yeah, that's a material sound. So like uh, sometimes uh, we are not very comfortable with some devotees, like uh, uh, maybe probably like not like-minded devotees. Um, so, I mean, we don't criticize them, but uh, we are not happy with that association. So in that mm -hmm. case, how should we um, like uh, deal with those situations? We don't yeah. want to criticize, but also we want to, as you said, we have like a free will, right? You know, to um, like uh, whatever association we are comfortable to be in that association. So, yeah, so we should think that because of my own conditioning, because of my own conditioning, I don't find that I, I find certain types of association more inspiring than others. It doesn't mean that the people who I don't find inspiring aren't pure. Someone may be very pure, but I don't necessarily find it so inspiring because of my own conditioning. And that's okay. And that's okay. So 
I respect that person. It's still a member of my family, mm. right? It's still a member of Prabhupada's mission. I respect mm. them. And if I see them, I'm respectful and I mm. think respectfully. But when I have the opportunity, I go looking for mm. and spend time with the association that I find inspiring in the Krishna conscious and uplifting way. Oh, good one. Yeah. Yeah. And then that will mean I will have association with juniors that is uplifting, association with peers, which are uplifting, and association with seniors, which is uplifting. All three relationships should be there, but with people in each of these categories, which I feel are uplifting. Okay. Yes, Ramji. Thank you. Thank you for all the Thank money. you. Yeah, okay. Hare Krishna. I think we don't have any questions here. I don't okay. see uh, the chat box also. I don't see any questions, Prabhuji. Um, okay. So then we'll end here? Yes, yes. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you so much for your wonderful. Thank you so much, Prabhuji. Um, thank you, thank you for your wonderful yeah. questions. Please, please do take this seriously. Yes. The regular hearing and reading of the Bhagavatam and asking the right questions. Whatever you may be struggling with, it doesn't matter. As long as you ask the right questions, you'll be amazed at how Krishna will use the devotees to give you the amazing answers that you need to hear to guarantee that you move forward. Okay. Hare Krishna. Your classes are always empowering, Prabhuji. I, I feel always empowered after listening to your class. And it's just, just, it's just the mercy of the devotees, the mercy of the spiritual master, the mercy of His Holiness Chandra Muli Maharaj, the mercy of Srila Prabhupada, Sri Sri Radha Krishna, Gornitai, and this Kartik month. So we wish, wish you great success, not just Kartik, every single moment of every single day in your spiritual life. If you do this practically, turn down the material sound, especially criticism, turn up the hearing and reading of the Bhagavatam and do it consistently. I guarantee you a miracle will happen in your life and you'll be able to see it. You'll see the miracle happening in yourself other people will see the miracle happening in you and, the, and you'll be able to do wonderful things in Krishna's service. So thank you. Hare Krishna. Yeah, wonderful points. Thank, thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. 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 Thank